being sappy, wistful without being cutesy, and totally captures the maelstrom of musical obsession, romantic pining, and disappointment that is a teenager's universe. Effective jump cuts, nifty descriptions, I have heard nifty in a long time. <laughs> Nifty descriptions, a very well executed coal diving scene, and terrific lines throughout. The piece is Kurt Cobain Avengers, and the author is Justin Vendell. the whole piece because it's a little long so what I'm going to do is um, read an excerpt and summarize um, what happens prior so I'm 14 and I get an electric guitar for my birthday this is perfect because I'm a total metal head and now I can play all the Slayer songs I want so this is a good thing um, but despite all efforts to resist I um, I listen to I, I log into um, log in that's not term I used at the time, it was pre-internet, but um, I watched MTV and a Nirvana video came on and I was confused because Nirvana was not heavy metal, but I liked it. <laughs> and so I, my binary universe, it was all imploding. Um, so, so starts my romantic relationship with Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. They guided me through my adolescence, through romances and breakups and all that type of thing. And um, then, of course, um, my friends and I discover one day in April 1994 that he's killed himself. And uh, how does a how does a teenager cope with that kind of kind of loss? We didn't know how to process it. So one day we find ourselves at the railroad tracks uh, east of Chicago, because this is where this takes place, and that's where this scene starts. I felt it before I saw anything, the dull rumble, earth shivering like an earthquake. I imagine the new Madrid fall jigging awake in northern Missouri and sending tremulous fingers to Chicago leaving a patchwork of towns and fields in shambled disarray. Corn stalks cracked and dangling in the roads. Fords overturned in the fields, wheels spinning. The train rounded the bend. Paul, Dan, and I waited. We let our adrenaline wash us over, double-checked our sneakers to make sure the laces were tied. Our soles smudged black from skateboard skids, found footing on the slopes of lava rock that cascaded down the sides of the embankment. This train was engine first. As the three engines pass, we emerge from the sumac, climb the embankment, and wait our chances. The train throbbed along, slow enough to consider hopping, but ultimately we decided against it. As the caboose passed, its red light blinking dimly in the late afternoon sun, we collected the pennies we placed on the running surface. The iron wheels had flicked them into the rocks. Lincoln's face stretched beyond all recognition. A consolation prize, something to suggest that boyish things still matter. I examined the lights on the signal bridge, red, red, green. Another train was coming, so we waited. Within a half hour, a freight squealed its way to a stop. We climbed the rusty red ladder to the boxcar roof. There was a long line of sturdy boxcars, and we left one to the next, keeping faith in our sneakers. The boxcars terminated into a string of hopper ore cars, opened <laughs> Open to the sun and half filled with iridescent chips of coal, we lined up at the edge, raised our fists in the air. My friend Dan yelled, Kurt Cobain Avengers! <laughs> and he leapt into the coal. Paul and I laughed at him. It was a corny thing to say, but somehow it, it felt right. Paul and I then shouted in unison, Kurt Cobain Avengers! <laughs> Jumping after him. I hit the pile and slid. The coal was hard and jagged, my fingers black with char. I climbed to the next car and jumped again. I leapt from coal car to coal car, purging, freeing myself from Kurt Cobain's fate. The train came alive, first the distant hum of engine, then a louder sound, like a car put in the gear. Dan climbed up and out, balancing his converse on the metal corner of the car, swinging his arms before him, pretending to jump. That wide grin, 
big white teeth, only three years stained by nicotine, raccoon rings under eyes, Dan, the burdens of hard life already creeping in. The train jerked forward a few inches, then stopped. Dan's head was thrust before him, and he teetered, but his knees bent at the right time, and he steadied himself. Whoa, he said. Paul clambered out and over, clinging tight to the ladder. The train jutted and thumped. We were rolling. Picking up speed, I said. I pulled myself to the boxcar. The trees and phone wires were racing past me. I blinked, and then I was racing past them. Dan joined me. It's really moving, he said. Faster and faster. How fast was too fast? I could tell that Dan was thinking the same thing, though I suspect he was torn, like I was. Maybe we should see how far it'll go. Fuck it, Dan said. I'm getting off. Reluctantly, I followed him down the ladder. Every day we came to the tracks, from Cobain's death in April until June. Kurt Cobain have been jailers, we shouted and left. We did this over and over until our hearts were tired. Come July, it was too hot, and Dan had a girlfriend. By August, Paul's dad accepted a job flying planes in North Carolina. I was with Paul when he put his drum set into a moving box. I waved half-heartedly as he drove around the corner out of sight. In his trunk was my skateboard, but I didn't know it then. So, that's that.